Hey, this is Jeremy Roberts. Uh, thank you so much for checking out jeremyroberts.org. It's my first time doing a screencast, so I hope it goes well. If you like this, by the way, please comment um, within the blog post and just tell me what you think about it. Uh, or if there are some ideas you have for me to make it better, I'd love to hear about it. Anyway, what you're looking at right now is my Evernote. And this screencast is about seven steps for pastors to efficiently use Evernote. I am an Evernote junkie, and I, uh, I've i just seen it work so well in my ministry, and I hope it'll help you out as well. Um, the first step is probably the most difficult for me to show you on this screencast, but it is to get a Fujitsu ScanSnap scanner and go paperless with Evernote. Really, the easiest way to grasp how to do this is to uh, go to the article that I've written about this, the blog post about this, and so it's linked within this one particular blog post entitled Seven Steps for Pastors to Efficiently Use Evernote on jeremyroberts.org, or you can just go in the search bar on my website and, and click ScanSnap, which is just one word, ScanSnap, and you'll be able to read uh, all, all about that step by step and why you specifically need to get the Fujitsu scanner because it scans directly into Evernote and it just makes it so much simpler. Number two, clip awesome articles. Now, the reason why I added the word awesome articles because you don't want to clip the lame ones. All right, let's get out of my personal email here for a second. And um, I, I've pulled up here uh, a, uh, a blog post by my friend Tom Rayner. And Tom writes just about every day I, I read his website, and uh, probably about once a week I save one of his blog posts. So I read this this morning, uh, today's post for him. I'm recording this on November 16th, 2015. And uh, he wrote uh, about six reasons why longer tenured pastorates are better. So let's say that I wanted to save that for some reason. What you do is, by the way, I use Google Chrome typically, and I encourage you to do that as well because it's the most Evernote-friendly web browser. And you just install the Evernote Web Clipper to your Chrome. Uh, and see, this elephant right here is the Evernote logo. So it says Clip to Evernote. So you just click that. And then it pulls up the title of the article right there. And, um, and then below that, you know, it automatically can tell instinctively that it is an article and what I like to do is I like to tag everything so what what you do is just click add tag and what is this article about it's about uh, it's about a pastor or, or the pastorate so okay I've already got pastor in there because I've written or I've tagged other things with the word pastor and uh, tenure and um, so you add those two tags to it and uh, I'll keep the title of the article as the title of my Evernote um, note right there. So then click Save, and boom, it'll show up in Evernote in just a few seconds, uh, depending on how fast your internet is. See, boom, it's already there. Uh, I've got, got good internet activity today uh, here at my office at Church of the Highlands. So anyway, six reasons why longer tenured pastors are better. Boom, it is in my Evernote. It's already tagged. And it's ready to rock and roll. Pretty simple. So uh, number two was clip awesome articles. Number three, utilize your Evernote email address. Utilize your Evernote email address. So let's go back to email. And um, let's see here. Let's, uh, let's look at, um, by the way, I know you can see this one little email. It's okay. There's nothing private there. So let's say... Um, well, let's say I need to email. Uh, I'll, I'll email myself just to make it simpler. So I'll email myself here, and then I'll copy my Evernote. Because if you ever want to email yourself something, uh, you can always copy. Or if you decide to blind copy yourself Evernote so other people can't see it, that's fine. You say, what is an Evernote email address? Um, this right here is my Evernote email address. And every Evernote user has a custom Evernote email address. And so what I've done in both my personal and in my church email addresses is I um, I save my Evernote email address as Evernote upload. I don't know why I chose that, but I did. So anyway, you can save that in there, and then whenever you want to email yourself something, 
Like, for instance, we're in budget season right now since I'm recording this in November in our church's budget. New budget year starts January 1. So uh, I've found myself uh, carbon copying my Evernote account with budgetary items that I want to pull up uh, on other devices. And so we'll just call this uh, in the subject line test for screencast because that's what this is. And so... Um, Boom, I've sent that email, and I'll show you how easily it shows up right there in your Evernote. See? That's so easy. So there is that email, and that's how you can utilize your Evernote email address. Other ways you can use this is I don't know if you have people in your life who are forwarders, people who forward you way too much stuff. I know I have a few of those in my life. And typically, I will delete that, but every once in a while, they'll send me something good, and what I'll do when I do get a good thing that I think I could use for an illustration or something uh, that was in my inbox, I'll just forward that on to my Evernote by using the Evernote email address, and it'll just pop up here, and then you can add the tags uh, right there. Uh, actually, a little trick, I'll show you this little shortcut, is, uh, all right, in the subject line, you can make this the title of the Evernote and then what you do is you add hashtag and that's how you can tag it so let's let's say you want to tag that Christmas because we're going to get to Christmas in a moment you'll see it pop up there alright so uh, anyway we'll send that over and um, and you can see it pop up pretty easily so um, see that that's the the title of the Evernote and then Christmas was already tagged so that's just a little shortcut for you now uh, that's how you utilize your Evernote email address number four tag and organize things well tag and or organize things well so I click over here at tags and I had already selected that one particular word for you but this is how I organize all of my stuff in Evernote you see this uh, I know I'm moving kinda quickly but uh, for example um, uh, firing people. I have one about firing people in here. First impressions, five. Um, when I used to live in Fort Worth, Texas, I've got four notes pertaining to my water bills there. Um, forgiveness. Let's click on forgiveness. And you can see I've saved 25 notes within Evernote that pertain to forgiveness. Uh, here is a message that I preached April 12th, 2015. And part of that sermon pertains to forgiveness and other things it pertains to are guilt uh, Dr. Luke, the past, and the series in which I preached that was Dream Home. And you, you know, you can use these tags to organize so much stuff. And it's really simple, um, you know, hermeneutics if I'm, if I'm a, an online professor for two different schools. So, um, I've taught hermeneutics a couple of times. Um, and, uh, you know, these are just some great resources that I've had in my notes over the years that pertain to hermeneutics. And a uh, matter of fact, when I taught this one class, um, these were some things that I used in it. So anyway, I've got that at, at my fingertips. If I ever wanted to look up hermeneutics, boom, it's right there. I don't have to go to a filing cabinet. I can pull it up on my iPad, my phone, my computer, wherever. Now, that's the, the simplest way for you to tag and organize things really, really well. Number five, add stuff to your Evernote daily. This is less of a screencast thing and more of just a general concept that if you want your, if you want your, uh, your Evernote to grow, you've got to add stuff on a consistent basis. And so just keep on adding stuff. You can just see here all of my tags. I don't mind you seeing them because you can't see inside of everything. But, um, Add stuff to your net, Evernote every day. Number six, take notes at conferences and in sermons with Evernote. Now, as you take notes, I'll give you an example. I just did this as a, I just looked up um, Tony Crisp as my father-in-law. Okay, Tony, uh, I was sitting under his preaching a few months ago at the church where he pastors. And so I was taking notes during his sermon. And I tagged it end times in Revelation because that's he was preaching an exposition of Revelation one, and uh, then by the way Tony is such a great theologian and particularly in eschatolo uh, eschatology that as I took notes I thought man I can use this in the future so uh, like this word study of mysterion uh, the Greek word for mystery 
It's a hidden secret now revealed by God, and that word is in the New Testament 27 times. It was hidden, but it's now revealed. That's a great little nugget right here for me to be able to use if I'm preaching on the mystery of God. Matter of fact, I could just type in uh, the word mysterion in my Evernote, and boom, that's the only time I have it in my Evernote is uh, from when I, I took that note with Tony. But when you take notes at, at conferences and in, in, when you listen to other people's sermons, you can save that content and be able to grasp it better. Um, number seven, and lastly, um, leverage your Evernote and sermon preparation. So let me give you an example of that. I'm about to begin my sermon preparation this week for my Christmas message series, and I've already done a little bit of looking into things, but as I just journey on over here to the C's for Christmas, you'll be able to see how, at least how I utilize this. So I have 40 notes in my Christmas tag. So I clicked on it, and then I click show the 40 notes, okay? Um, and remember, at the beginning of this screencast, I tagged it Christmas. Uh, so boom, that one popped up right there. Um, I scanned this when I went completely paperless. This is something I found in my old files, and this is Old Testament prophecies that were fulfilled in Jesus, and I tagged it as Christmas, Jesus, and prophecy. And so you can see right there how it pulls up. And when I'm preaching in uh, December, I can utilize these things in my sermon preparation. Um, this is a sermon that I preached last year on uh, uh, that pertains to Christmas. And so, by the way, what I do, I save every little file that pertains to that particular message within that one note. So I've got my keynote, uh, you know, it's the Mac version of, of PowerPoint. I've got uh, the community group lesson that somebody wrote uh, in our church for this, the sermon handout that we put within our, uh, our bulletin, and um, uh, here's the sermon manuscript, and then here's the manuscript in Word, and then here it is as a PDF file. And uh, so anyway, I put it all in there as one note, and that helps me to be able to have all the content if I ever want to preach that again. And you can see just having all of that stuff. Let's just boogie on down to the bottom here. I've got some other sermons, some by me, some by other people. All right, here's here's one. Christmas sermon ideas. Uh, this is just a little quote that I came across somewhere, and I just stuck it in there, and I tagged it Christmas really quickly. Simple. Um, another one, that's just a great little quote that I could use in a in a sermon that I'm preaching for Christmas this year. Um, but, you know, as I journey through this, you see, I've saved sermon graphics. This is a series I preached a few years ago called Incarnation. By the way, if you wanted those graphics, I'd give them to you. If you just email me, jeremypaulroberts at gmail.com. Anyway. Uh, lastly, on Twitter, uh, James Merritt, he, he tweeted this great little quip, Jesus Christ was born physically that we might be born again spiritually. Man, that is a great little quote. Well, I saved that in February of 2012. Uh, I will use that in December of 2015. You know, so, uh, you know, two and a half years after he, or he tweeted that, uh, three and a half years. So, anyway... Just so simple on how to leverage your Evernote and sermon prep. And typically what I do is after I've done my exegesis and uh, I've outlined the text um, and all that kind of stuff, what I like to do is to go into my Evernote after I've got my, my skeleton built and, uh, and to see what information I, I've already studied and I can just insert uh, into my sermon manuscript as I'm preparing my sermon. So anyway, those are the seven steps for pastors to efficiently use Evernote. I hope that you'll uh, subscribe to my blog, jeremyroberts.org, get it emailed to you every single day. And thanks so much for checking this out. Bye.